Hello and welcome to yet another lecture on the binomial theorem. In the last two lectures, we looked at some examples of the application of the binomial theorem. In this lecture, we will look at uh, a few identities which can be derived based on the binomial theorem. So recall once again that the binomial theorem is given by x plus y power n, the summation r equals 0 to n, ncr, x power n minus r, y power r. Uh, so in this lecture and in some of the subsequent lectures, we will be using the shorthand notation of CR uh, for NCR when n is either a generic natural number n or when n is known and there is no confusion, we will use CR for NCR. So you can write the binomial theorem uh, more succinctly as summation r equals 0 to n c r x power n minus r y power r. Also note the following uh, consequence of the binomial theorem, the following uh, identity can be derived. This 1 plus x whole power n, the summation r equals 0 to n c r x power r. So we showed this result in uh, one of the earlier lectures on the binomial theorem. And we will be using this result uh, quite a bit in this lecture. So the first identity uh, we would want to derive is as follows. Uh, so we want to show that C0 plus C1 and so on till plus Cn equals 2 power n. So once again, Cr represents ncr. Uh, when there is no confusion that we are referring to NCR. And so this identity uh, sort of imposes a structure on the CRs. And they, it tells us that they don't just vary as they like, and they have a certain pattern to them. And that must have been clear from the first lecture, where we showed that the uh, combinatorial coefficients had some interrelationships between them. So to show this first result, uh, we can we would like to find an expansion where CRs are the coefficients. And one such expansion is given by the expansion of 1 plus x whole power n. So now we know an expansion of a term, the binomial expansion of a term, which gives us CRs as the coefficients. And we can use the following trick. So plug in x equals 1 in 1 plus x whole power n. So what does that give us? Uh, the left hand side of this identity gives us 2 power n since x is 1 and the right hand side gives us summation r equals 0 to n cr times 1 power r which is nothing but summation r equals 0 to n CR. So this right hand side is nothing but C0 plus C1 and so on till Cn, and the left hand side is 2 power n, which is what we wanted to show. So the trick in this case was to find some expansion where the coefficients were uh, the terms which we wanted to sum, and then we would just plug in a value for x in that expansion to get a value of a closed form value for the sum. So let's look at more examples. Second example is a little bit more involved. It asks us to find 1c1 plus 2c2, and so on till ncn. Where once again, cr represents ncr. So the first thing when you are given such a problem is to write out the general term. So this summation is nothing but summation r equals 1 to n r c r. So this must be uh, quite clear to you by writing, out, by writing out each term in this form and then writing a summation. So I, again, uh, the f uh, first approach is to find out a sequence, uh, uh, find out a binomial term whose expansion has the coefficients r, c, r. 
So our binomial expansion of 1 plus x whole power n has CR times x power R. So if you want to get RCR, one possible way is to differentiate this term x power r, and that gives you r times x power r minus 1. And then you could substitute a suitable value of x to get rcr, uh, the summation of rcr. So that's exactly what we would do. So uh, the first approach we're looking at is differentiate one plus x whole power n with respect to x. So the left hand side of this identity gives us n times one plus x whole power n minus one. And the right hand side gives us summation r equals zero to n c r times r times x power r minus one. So as we, as we so desired, we have uh, the terms R, C, R appearing in the binomial expansion uh, of this term on the left-hand side. So once again, we can use the same trick as previously, as done previously, and we can plug in x equals 1 to get n times 2 power n minus 1 equals summation r equals 0 to n, r, c, r, and the remaining term is just 1. So we evaluated summation r, c, r, and it turns out to be n times 2 power n minus 1. So that's one approach. So this approach involved differentiating the power series 1 plus x whole power n uh, term-wise to get the desired result. There's a second approach which can use a combinatorial identity, which we've seen earlier. And the second approach is as follows. Let me just swap markers here. So in the second approach, we would directly want to sum r equals 1 to n, r c r. But the annoying thing about this sum is that we have two terms, each of which vary uh, with respect to r. So for different r values, both of these, the r term and the cr term, both vary with respect to r. And if we somehow manage to make only one of these vary with respect to r, we could potentially use the previous identity. If we were to somehow get rid of the r, we could use the previous identity uh, we saw earlier to get a closed term expression for the sum. So that can be done using the identity we saw earlier uh, in the first lecture, where we saw that r times ncr equals n times n minus 1 c r minus 1. So this is an identity which we uh, established in our first lecture. And we will use this identity to transform the sum into a more amenable form. So once you use this identity, um, you would have summation r equals 1 to n r c r equals summation r equals 1 to n, n times n minus 1 c r minus 1. And that is nothing but equal to summation r equals 1 to n. And you can take the n outside because it is independent of r, n minus 1 c r minus 1. And now you can just use change of indices. Uh, to get summation r equals 0 to n minus 1, n minus 1 c r. So this is just a transformation of the indices uh, to a more suitable form. And once you have this, you just notice that this, sec this term here is nothing but uh, summation of c r from r equals 0 to n minus 1. And from the previous identity, we have that that is 2 power n minus 1. And so this gives you n times 2 power n minus 1, which is the same result as we obtained earlier using the differentiation technique. So there are two potential ways of doing this. One is by using, uh, by differentiating the power series 
uh, and then plugging in a suitable value of x. The other is to re-express your uh, problem in terms of an identity you've seen earlier using this combinatorial result, r times ncr equals n times n minus 1 cr minus 1. So in general, it might be easier for you to apply the differentiation technique whenever it is applicable, uh, but it's sometimes also useful to use these combinatorial tricks to simplify your effort. So the uh, third problem we'll be looking at is as follows. It asks us to evaluate C0 minus C1 plus C2 minus C3 and so on till minus 1 power n, cn. And it asks us to evaluate this um, sum. So once again, you write out the general term of this summation. Uh, and you can re-express the sum as summation r equals 0 to n minus 1 power r times cr. So we would like to form this term, minus 1 power r cr, from 1 plus x whole power m. And you can directly match the terms in these two uh, summations uh, and set x equals minus 1 in 1 plus x whole power n. And that gives us. On the left hand side, we have 0 power n, which is nothing but 0. And on the right hand side, you have summation r equals 0 to n, cr times minus 1 power r. And the right hand side is exactly what we require, which is c0 minus c1 plus c2 and so on. And the, the result evaluates to 0, which is the left hand side. And so once again, we've just used the binomial expansion of 1 plus x power n to derive this summation, to derive a closed form expression for the summation. Okay, now let's see an application of these, um, some of the theorems we've seen earlier. So this problem asks you to, this problem asks you to evaluate the sum 100 C0 plus 3 into 100 C1 plus 5 into 100 C2 and so on till plus 201 times 100 C100. You're asked to evaluate this sum. So once again, the first step is to write this, su write this sum out in the form of a general term. And so you can see that this is nothing but summation r equals 0 to 100. And this is nothing but 100 c r. And this is 2 times r plus 1. So this is the summation we want. And this is of the form summation 2 r plus 1 times n c r, r running from 0 to n where n is 100 in this case. So, so let's try and find the general sum. The summation r equals 0 to n, 2r plus 1, cr. And then we can just plug in n equals 100 in the final result. So this summation, if you expand it out, it's nothing but summation r equals 0 to n, 2rcr plus summation r equals 0 to n cr. And this first term is nothing but, again, summation r equals 0 to n. And you can take the 2 out, and you just write rcr. And the second term is nothing but summation r equals 0 to n cr. So these two summations should look familiar to you because they are the second and the first parts we've seen today, uh, respectively. So you can just plug in the results from our previous derivations to obtain summation r equals 0 to n, 2r plus 1, 
C R equals two times summation R equals zero to N R C R is nothing but N times two power N minus one and summation R equals zero to N C R is nothing but two power N. So this gives us n times 2 power n plus 2 power n, which is nothing but n plus 1 times 2 power n. So summation r equals 0 to 100, 2r plus 1, 100cr is just obtained by plugging in n equals 100 in this expression. That's nothing but 101 times 2 power 100. So this example illustrates nicely how the previous theorems we derived can be applied and it's potentially a question which can be asked in an exam situation. And so as you can see, uh, the binomial coefficients have some very nice properties which can be derived based off the general binomial theorem. And in our next lecture, we will look at uh, some more properties of the binomial coefficients. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Uh, thank you for your attention and see you next time around.